Welcome to Business Infrastructure, the podcast about curing back office blues of fast-growing businesses. If you're a business owner or operator looking for practical tips and solutions to scaling your business in a sustainable manner, you're in the right place. Now here's your hostess, Alicia Butler-Pierre. Hi there, it's me, Alicia, and this is the final episode of season 14. Now, if you've listened to this show for a while, then you know that I close out each season with a monologue. If it's your first time listening, welcome. Make sure you subscribe so that you'll know when new episodes air. Now, in case you also weren't aware, season 14 is all about game-changing technologies. And as usual, we were joined by 12 guests who each shared the one technology that's changed the game for their back office operations. Technology has no doubt changed the way we operate our businesses. With the ever-looming threat of labor shortages and other supply chain disruptions, it's important that we find the right technologies to digitize, streamline, and automate the way we work. Those decisions are more critical now than ever. So. We're going to explore, or I should say I'll recap, 13 game-changing technologies that can revolutionize the way your organization operates. And I think the best part, what I love the most about every single one of these technologies that was recommended this season, they're all cloud-based and none of them require coding skills. Now, you can get more sophisticated But to do some of these or to implement some of these technologies at their most basic level doesn't require any coding skills whatsoever. I want to make sure I shout out those 12 guests who told us about those technologies. Jay Jamal, Tracy Hazard, Dean Hamilton, Stephanie Espy, Amber Fehrenbacher, Benjamin Shapiro, Jason Kavnes, Kamanzi Constable, Lloyd Lobo, Kate Erickson, and Tal Slotnitsky. I've loosely categorized these technologies into the following categories, financial, human resources, marketing, IT and data management, and operations. So make sure you go to businessinfrastructure.tv, look for season 14 if you want to get the details of how to implement each of these technologies as I list them off. So under The financial category, as we know, businesses obviously need capital to stimulate growth as well as scale. So there were two fintech tools that both make it easier to access capital. And those two technologies, fintech technologies that were shared with us this season are Tilful and Boast.ai. So again, make sure you go and check out those particular episodes if you want to find out more details about those two particular technologies. So next up under the human resources category, we had one technology invented by my good friend, Jason Kavness. So again, as businesses start to grow, expand, scale, so does the need to expand your team. And as you start to add more people to your team, you'll need to formalize even more of your HR policies, procedures, protocol, And if you have a small business with less than 49 employees, including independent contractors, make sure you go and check out Cavness HR. Better yet, listen, go back and listen to some of the episodes here in this particular season because Cavness HR was actually a sponsor this season. And they have a very special offer for signing up for, I think it was a 90 day trial period for their software as a service solution when it comes to all things HR. So definitely make sure you go and check out that episode again if you haven't already. Okay, next up under the marketing category. Now, whether you want to promote an event or even promote and really push the content that you've written, these three MarTech technologies or MarTech tools, I should just say, they make sure that they help you connect with potential customers, existing customers, other people in your company's ecosystem, as well as staying in touch. It's one thing to connect with people initially, but how do you make sure you stay in front of people and stay in touch with them? So three tools that were mentioned are Hopin, ActiveCampaign, and Cameo. Now, I should say, 
shout out to Colt Briner. And I, I just realized I inadvertently left Colt's name out of the, the guest list. So I do apologize for that. But Colt Briner actually listed at least six different marketing technologies that he leverages when he's working with his small business clients. And a lot of those tools, again, most of them are free. If not free, they're offered at a very low cost, something that's very affordable. So again, make sure you go and check out all of those technologies as well. Next, we have IT and data management. So digitizing operations will likely involve working more in the cloud as well as collecting and managing more data. So the following tools that I'm going to mention offer a type of data security that is definitely going to be needed as you start to embrace more of these cloud-based technologies in particular. So the first one, which actually happened to be listed in our first episode for this season, is blockchain. Then we learned about Figma and robotic process automation. So there wasn't a particular software that was mentioned for robotic process automation, but the idea is to first educate yourself about what the technology can do, and then just make sure you go and find the solution that you think would work best for you. Now, last up, last category, we have operations. (laughs) Now, as you know from listening to this show, Information and work should flow as seamlessly as possible, but it also makes makes it even better when your team can have full visibility, not only in what work needs to be done, but by whom and how. So there were three different task and project management tools that were mentioned very specifically by our guests this season, and those three are Asana, ClickUp, and Monday.com. And I'm going to add a fourth one, Notion, N-O-T-I-O-N. Now, this is the technology that I want to share with you in this episode today. My team and I have officially been using Notion right at about a year as of this recording. And I have to tell you, this is by no means an exaggeration and no, they are not paying me to say this, but Notion has single-handedly been the most revolutionary tool that we have used to streamline our back office operations. It has given us a level of transparency that simply did not exist before. Now, although we were using tools like Dropbox for Business, Google Drive to manage a lot of our documents, we were using things like Slack to facilitate quick and easy communication, there was still something missing because even with Dropbox for Business and Google Drive, we were finding that information was still buried in these nested folders and we just couldn't easily put our hands on things like we wanted to. Even though there's, yes, a search feature, we just knew that there had to be something out there better. Now, what's interesting, we actually tried Asana, ClickUp, and Monday.com, but in the end, Notion one, you know, Notion beat them all out. So what I'd like to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to YouTube so that if you are watching this on YouTube, then you're about to see me give an actual demo. If you are listening to the actual podcast, I will do my best to try to give a description of what I will share on my screen. But I would also highly encourage you after you listen to this podcast to also make sure you head on over to YouTube, the Equilibria Inc. channel, so that you can actually see what I'm about to share with you about Notion. So let's do it. Let's go for it. Okay, everyone. So we are now in Notion. And what better way to describe what Notion actually is than from the makers of it themselves? So I am at the website notion.so, and that's spelled N-O-T-I-O-N dot S-O for those of you who are only listening to the podcast right now and maybe don't have the benefit of seeing this actual video. So this is the website, and this is how they themselves describe what Notion is. One workspace, every team, where more than a document or a table, customize Notion to work the way you do. Well, what the heck does that actually mean? Well, let me show you what we have actually done in Notion. Now, keep in mind, I can't show you everything. Obviously, this would be an incredible. We just don't have the time for that. 
But what I do want to show you is how we actually leverage Notion to manage some of the back office activities that are happening with this actual podcast. So I'm going to go over here and I'm clicking on, I actually have Notion installed to my phone. So it's a phone app. I also have it installed as a desktop application. That way I can always just click on a button in the bottom tray of my PC. I would imagine it works the same way on a Mac. So I'm going to just click on this icon here at the bottom. And now you see a page. It almost looks like a website in a way. You can add images, you can have icons. The first thing that I want to point out on this screen that you see is if you look over on the far left-hand side of the screen, you're going to notice something that says workspace. When you first open up or sign up for a free Notion account, and they do have paid versions as well, when you first open it, you will literally have a blank page. Nothing will be there. And so the tool is going to ask you, what are the workspaces that you initially want to create? The workspaces that you see here, aside from the welcome tab, everything else corresponds to a specific department at Equilibria, which is the company that is behind this podcast. So you see operations, marketing, accounting, business development, human resources, legal compliance, and information technology. We also color code each workspace. Again, this helps everyone by color coding it. It makes sure that everybody on the team can quickly associate a color with a particular department, and it makes it that much quicker and easier for them to locate the information they're looking for. Now here, the page that I have pulled up, I'm just going to expand this business development workspace here on the left-hand side of the screen so that you can see there's the podcast page and there's a podcast guest directory page. So I'm going to give you a quick preview of both of these pages. On the podcast page, the page that you primarily see taking up most of your screen, the very first section that you'll notice is a table of contents. I can click on any one of these sections and it will take me directly to that point on the page where that information exists. So for example, I have here pre-production. If I click on pre-production, it's taken me directly to that particular place on the page. Now I'm going to scroll all the way back up because I want to give you again, just a really quick preview of what Notion looks like for us as it pertains specifically to the podcast. I know, I know it was just starting to get good, right? Well, there's more where that came from. To listen to the full interview, be sure to click the link in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so that you'll know when our next episode drops. Until then, keep operating smoothly. Join us next week for another episode of Business Infrastructure with Alicia Butler-Pierre.